Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Uh, welcome back to a very special episode. Um, in today's episode, um, we're going to be chatting with uh, Toyo Harada. And uh, who is Toyo Harada? Well, if you're not familiar with him, you should check him out on BitChute. You should check him out on YouTube. But basically, he's just a good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we became friends uh, back in December during the whole crypto apocalypse. He uh, reached out to me, interviewed me. And yeah, you know, now we chat all the time about all kinds of stuff. And uh, one of the last times that we had a conversation, I said to him, hey, why don't we uh, record this and, uh, you know, do a little bit of a podcast thing. And speaking of which, um, I want to make a little bit of announcement. I'm going to be doing a lot of those, uh, a lot of these podcast type things, you know, coming into the near future. Um, not just with uh, my friend over here, Toya, but um, uh, but also with, um, you know, a good friend of ours, Hanson, which uh, you guys might know him uh, from the chat Discord groups. You know, we're going to be doing a little bit of, uh, you know, just um, bro talk, all kinds of talk. I'm also going to be, you know, um, doing another one of these podcasts with uh, another friend of mine uh, that you guys also know from the Discord group, uh, you know, John, you know, shout out to John out there. We're going to be doing some uh, Bitcoin talk, Bitcoin 101. In fact, by the time you're watching this, you probably would have already seen the first one of the episodes, uh, which you saw yesterday. And now today, uh, we're just going to be doing um, some more of a news political type talk with my friend over here, Toyo Harada. Um, and um, basically, we had a little bit of a format as to how we were going to go about this. You know, we were basically um, going to pick like the top news stories of the week and uh, kind of do like a week in review type of thing. Uh, but since this is pretty much the first one, kind of like the pilot episode, um, and we're still trying to get our feet wet, you know, during this whole thing, um, I just said to him, hey, you know what? Let's just uh, turn the camera on, turn the recording device on and uh, just go at it and uh, see how it goes. And then, you know, as uh, time goes along, we'll you know, uh, j just put a, a little bit more of a format to it. But, you know, for now, you know, we're going to be talking a little bit. And um, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to shut up for a quick minute. I'm going to spark up my blunt and I'm going to throw, uh, you know, I'm throw the ball over to I'm going to pass it, you know, over to Toyo so he can uh, inter introduce himself uh, to all of us. And uh, yeah, whatever. I'll just shut up and uh, t go ahead, bro. Take it. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm pulling myself away. <laughs> All right. Well, yo, what's up, everybody? I'm Toya Harada, and uh, I want to say thanks to Jose for having me on. I think this is fantastic. Um, what I do usually is just talk about foreign policy on my channel. And uh, again, it's on BitChute, but I have a YouTube as well. And uh, lately, I've been doing a show called War Never Changes, and then whatever the date is. And I just go over all foreign policy news, anywhere that there is some sort of um, you know, U.S. engagement militarily, um, I, I usually will just do a quick headline, you know, read a little bit of an article. And uh, I've been doing that for the last week here. Other than that, I usually, you know, I'll look at like Iran or Iraq specifically and just do a long video about that. Um, I'm still kind of new to it. So I'm still trying to work out, uh, I don't know, my format and what I want to do. But I really like what I'm doing with the War Never Changes stuff. So if you're interested in foreign policy at all, um, check out my channel and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I know Jose talks a lot, though, about <laughs> cryptocurrencies. That's something I'm a big advocate of. Um, you know, I try to kind of be like libertarian minded, sort of that anarcho capitalist thing. And uh, that meshes well with what happens with cryptocurrency, the sound money aspect. It's immutable and censorship resistant, all that great stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't know. And then besides that, like Jose had mentioned, um, I hit him up during that crypto apocalypse and um, yeah, I don't know. I saw that he had a bunch of the strikes. I wanted to know more about that. And I saw he tweeted, I, I think it was at Kim.com. He replied. And uh, that's where I found him. That's where I hit him up and was like, yo, you got strikes. Let, let me ask you a couple of questions about it. And uh, yeah, and then the rest is history. Cool, cool, man. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that little bit of an intro, um, letting us know who you are and stuff like that. And I guess let's just get into it. Let's just start talking because basically, you know, we were talking about a bunch of things, you know, everything from uh, birth certificates, uh, you know, to, you know, all kinds of shit. So, but, you know, uh, we, we did say that uh, earlier on, uh, 
you know, you wanted to talk about the whole uh, zero hedge uh, being banned from Twitter. And to me, I thought this was interesting because, you know, I, I, I read zero hedge. I know a lot of us in the mm -hmm. audience kind of read it. And it doesn't matter whether you are for, you know, you know, their, you know, what they talk about or not. You know, basically, it just goes back to the censorship thing that, you know, back when they censored Alex Jones, that was only the beginning. And now, as you guys, well, you know, we're already well aware that pretty much everyone is getting censored left, right, up, down, middle, don't matter. And so, yeah, go ahead. I mean, go, yeah, let's fill us in a little more on uh, what happened there with Zero Hedge and uh, Twitter. Yeah, well, I mean, basically, if anybody's unfamiliar with Zero Hedge, it's kind of just like an aggregate site. They pull from all over the Internet and just kind of like repost other people's articles. And they do write their own. But for the most part, though, it is just things from all over. And they focus a lot on like different market news. And it's sort of like, it, well, all of it is actually outside of like the mainstream perspective of what is happening with the markets. They do the same with foreign policy. They do post a lot about the cryptocurrencies and everything that's happening in that world. And um, it's really just sort of like a, a, a news hub that's just outside of the mainstream narrative on pretty much everything. And um, I don't know, a lot of people say it's like some some conservative thing or some libertarian thing. I don't really think it is. I think it's just alternative in general. And uh they had run, they ran a story about the origins of the coronavirus potentially coming from this lab. And they, um, I don't know, they, they had been accused by somebody that works at BuzzFeed for doxing this person. And um, yeah, so so they filed a complaint with Twitter and Twitter just like permabanned them off of Twitter. And uh, I don't know, the, the censorship there is just, it's crazy. They said it was for um, abuse and harassment, but the information that they posted was all online. They took the guy's information from his his company's website. So like they didn't dig up any sort of private information. Everything that they posted about um, this guy and and you know how he's linked sort of to this company that could have potentially you know developed this this coronavirus. Um, you know, all of that was online already. They just kind of put it together. And uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. And I don't know, with Alex Jones, that was huge. And, uh, you know, he does talk some out there stuff. Again, no reason to be to be banned or anything like that. But he was huge. And, and he has a lot of support. A lot of people were aware of him. Um, but like Zero Hedge is sort of smaller. So when this gets banned, there's not going to be too many people that, are, that were even aware Zero Hedge was ever a thing at all. Um, let alone be concerned that now they're no longer allowed on Twitter. So um, I don't know. I just think that it, it's it's pretty important. They might get reinstated, I guess. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, I don't believe Alex Jones ever was, so I don't really have too much hope that Zero Hedge will be. Oh, right. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I mean, well, the thing is, I mean, about Twitter, the, the whole thing with the doxing, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking as we're speaking, you know, as you were talking about the, the whole article, you were informing us. I was uh, going through Zero Hedge, see, like, seeing, seeing if I could find the original um, uh, posting, because I remember actually reading it. Uh, when it was posted and then I heard about the Twitter ban like, you know, way later. Um, and I had no idea when, you know, they were both related until I looked into it later. But yeah, basically, uh, it was just that like a zero hedge broke the story that they basically found the guy, right? Supposedly behind the, you know, the, the Wuhan or whatever the fuck, you know, but you know, the guy behind the releasing it, right? Or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And I was like, oh shit. And so not only did they find him, uh, but then, you know, they put his info out there that was already out there. And then that, was what was reported as doxing, which, uh, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, it, it, I mean, I read the article when it came out and basically, I mean, according to what doxing is, it, I mean, what that means is that, you know, don't allow, uh, you know, what is it? Don't encourage, uh, like a group of, or a mob of people, right. To attack yeah, or, or go after but, a person. And, and so basically, I mean, I, the whole doxing thing with uh, what happened with the zero hedge thing was that yeah I mean they, they, I read the article and that's why I'm trying to find it again um, and it, it said in the article that you know people should figure out a way to reach out to this guy and they put the guy's email in fact they, they put the guy's email and information on there like and I was like oh shit you know what I mean like I was like oh crap you know what I mean like and uh, I just thought it was interesting and then when I saw the Twitter ban and then I heard it was because of doxing immediately I was like oh yeah it, it was like the, the, the story you know what I mean like it was just it went, you know, uh, two and two. And what is it like? Uh, I connected the dots immediately as to <laughs> as to what, what, what where, where, you know, what could have caused that. So I don't. I mean, I don't know. I think that maybe Zero Hedge could have fucked up in this case. And then the whole doxing thing. Uh, 
you know, I'm not, look, I'm, I'm not for censorship. I hate censorship, but, uh, but yeah, you know what I mean? He, this, this would be considered doxing, I guess. Right. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, do you think it's considered doxing or. I mean, I, I think I, they, I think they knew what they were doing. You know what I mean? When they put that guy's name and the email address up there, but then like they knew that people were going to be calling him, sending him emails, blowing up his inbox and all that. But at the same time though, like I always consider doxing just like information that is private. So like if you're just hanging out and you don't, your, your information isn't on a website somewhere and then somebody takes your phone number and puts it out there. Like that's what, kind of what I consider doxing. Where what they did was they went to the company's website to his profile and just took that information out there. So I don't know. Like they they did know what they were doing though when they posted it. They knew that, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it wasn't, I guess, the best intentions for it. They were trying to be snarky and all of that. But at the end of the day, like I, I really wouldn't consider it doxing though. It's almost like if you took the manager at a local uh, McDonald's website. You, like you know what I mean, and, and then posted that online. Like it does exist. It's shitty to do, but I don't know. That information isn't necessarily private. No, wait, I don't wait, know. Wait, yeah, I'm not. Look, look, I'm not. I'm not here defending. Uh, you know, either or. You know what I mean? Like uh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like I just thought it was fucking hilarious that they did that, and uh, pretty ballsy that they did that. And um, yeah, but I mean, it's just interesting. But I mean, I, I'm just going. Like I guess you know, just speaking as to. You know, what could have caused it? You know, because, for example, you know, like uh, when somebody gets banned for, you know, just saying, hey, you're retarded. Oh, fuck. Damn it. I already said the word. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you see what I'm saying? But like when somebody gets banned for just saying that word or saying another word like that, that's a triggering word or triggering, whatever. You know what I mean? That to me is ridiculous. You know what I mean? That to me. Yeah. You know, come on. Come on now. But, you know, in the case of, like, uh, maybe what he did, I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, what Zero Heads did, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find the fucking original. Tyler Durden. What was that? Oh, the Tyler Durden is the name. <laughs> the guy from Fight Club. He writes all the articles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's uh, Tyler Durden is the guy behind the... <laughs> yeah, if you ever read Zero Heads, like, the main guy that writes the articles is... Uh, his name is, uh, is Tyler Durden. You know, the same guy from... Uh... From, yeah, I'm trying to find. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to derail you. No, 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 you don't. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but but anyways, uh, but you know, the whole thing with like uh, the censorship, though, it, it I mean, I, I'm I I myself am you know a victim to the shit. You know what I mean? Are you kidding me? Um, you know whether it's uh you know what happened to me in December, right? How we met, or you know yeah. what happened to me recently with now a copyright strike over usage of something that I had the right to use, but yet. You know what I mean? Like, it's up to me to find a way to fight this in court, assuming I want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, which I yeah. don't. And, and it's like, you know, that whole fucking predicament there. And, uh, you know, the whole censorship thing that is affecting us in, 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 in many ways. You know what I mean? In, in a million ways. You know, like, even if you are, you know, just a regular Joe Schmo working a regular Joe Schmo job. You know what I mean? Uh, and, um, you know, you say something about Trump to Sally. You know, hey, that might have triggered her, and uh, that that might have been enough to get you fired. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know no, that that is that is a horrifying reality we're in. Right. I, but actually, what you were just saying with the copyright strike, I don't know uh, <laughs> if you talked about it in any of your videos. I know you mentioned to me they sent you like all of this paperwork and a process that you could go through if you wanted to keep it up there. Um, yeah, I don't know if you talked about that. If or if you wanted to mention it here, I just thought it was wacky though. Like they, they try to make you go through all of these hoops that the everyday person likely isn't going to do. You know what I mean? To to just use whatever it was. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I did talk about it. You know, like I was talking okay. about it. Like uh, the last uh, few live streams that I was doing um, after I got the copyright strike, and I was uh, you know trying to alert the the audience about what the situation. But yeah, I mean basically. You know, the whole, um, you know, the whole copyright system is broken on YouTube. You know, there's a lot of things that are broken on YouTube. And so right now they would rather side on the, on the side of error, you know, than, uh, than side with us. Because let me explain. I mean, we look, we all know that YouTube is be trying to become Comcast basically, you know, like where they're trying to eliminate voices like you and me and others. And they're just, you know, making room for the CNNs of the world and the USA networks of the world or whatever the fuck. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, <laughs> USA Jimmy Network, shout out, shout out the USA, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if they're still around. 
you know, but or the Hallmark Channel. But anyways, look, the point is, is that, you know, that's what they're trying to cater to. That's what they're trying to become. And they're pushing us away. So, you know, when like the whole Copa law stuff, you know, um, if, you know, most people were fucking terrified of the whole Copa law stuff because they didn't know what the hell that signified. But, you know, basically, you know, people, um, you know, other YouTubers, you know, out there, they reached out to the federal government, to the F, uh, FCC, and they go, hey, what the fuck is up with this? And the FCC is like, well, actually, this has nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? This is never going to affect you or any creator out there ever, period. This is only affecting a company or corporation like YouTube. Now, let me explain. Uh-oh. Is that, oh, is that, is that the FBI calling already? Uh, <laughs> they heard us. <laughs> no, so, you know, basically how it works is like this. You know, we think that YouTube is free. We think that... Uh, Facebook and all these platforms are free, but they're not, you know, they're harvesting our data. You know, that's what, you know, that's the price of admission, you know, that our, our data, you know, that costs a lot of money. We just don't know that it costs a lot of money because, you know, they're not, you know, they're not, they're not that dumb. You know, they're not going to be out there fucking trying to, uh, you know, put a price on it so that anyways, let me not fucking go off on a rail here. But anyways, so <laughs> off the rails, but look, the point is, is that it's our data that's for sale. So that's why at the end of the day, you know, basically, they allow even people like you and me to be on YouTube because they want our data and they want the data of the people that are listening to this and, and all this other, you know, all the stuff that goes with that. So it's very valuable. So what happened was that um, a few months back, the, the U, I mean, I'm sure you remember this, the U.S. government um, laid down the law on, on uh, YouTube and said, hey, boom, boom. You know, they, they you know, they, uh, they they did a ruling in which um, they found YouTube guilty of uh taking the data of children that are watching YouTube. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. And, okay, and they had to pay a humongous monstrosity of a fine. And not only did they have to pay the fine, but as you know, once there's a ruling, um, then all of a sudden now, if, you know, if that's like a law, just in case if there wasn't a law or there wasn't like a thing, you know, now all of a sudden there's a ruling. So from this point forward in any other instance in which YouTube or any other um, social media does the same exact thing. There's no more. Hey, I didn't know about it. You know what I mean? It's more like, hey, this is you're in trouble. You know what I mean? Like you broke the fucking law. How you know? How dare you? You know, steal children's information. So up until that point, you know, YouTube was just playing the victim, saying, oh, uh, we, I didn't know that we were taking the kids' information. Um, the the people that we you know we thought that the people that were taking the information were the YouTube uh, creators. But again. You know, anyone that's a creator knows or anyone that knows uh, anything about this, you know, it's like you and me have no access to anyone's data. You know what I mean? So how the fuck can they say that we are the ones that were harvesting the kids data or, or anyone or any other entity? So basically, you know, the ruling came down and YouTube was found gu guilty of stealing kids data. And they were. I mean, they, they have been. So because of that, you know, then uh, the FCC said, OK, we got to fix the COPA rules, you know, the COPA law that's already in effect in order to make sure, you know, because of this ruling, you know, now we know that these companies are out there, you know, stealing kids data. So we got to figure out a way to, you know, you know what I mean, like to just make a law so that they, they, they know they can't do it. They can't play dumb anymore. So that's what the COPA rule was. Notice that no other entity out there except for YouTube was worried about this. Why? Because YouTube now, they can't, you know, harvest the data of children anymore. So it's, it, they don't, they're not going to waste their money or their time or their energy or their, or their, um, what is it? Or their, um, processing power or whatever, you know, in order to host these videos that are made for children, because they're not going to be able to get that data from the viewers of those videos anymore. So basically, because of all that, they said, OK, now you got to label all your videos either kid friendly or not kid friendly. And what does that mean? If you're kid friendly, you know, no ads, no nothing. You're basically you're, you're dude. They're treating you like Alex Jones, basically. But anyone, <laughs> anyone else that makes any other content, you know, it, it could be anything as long as you say it's made for adults. Hey, that's it. You know what I mean? You're a YouTuber. So now YouTube is basically 18 and over. But, what, but they don't say they're 18 and over. And basically, you know, you can have any kind of content on, on YouTube now, but now it's adult content. So now if you as a parent are showing your kid, you know, some content on YouTube for whatever reason, now you're the one that could be held liable. You know what I mean? Like, hey, why are you showing your child this adult content? You see how they fuck? You, you see how they, 
Yeah. 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 Sorry. No, actually, I, I remember at the time too, they were like, there was all those channels where it was like really bizarre animations <laughs> where they were just like gaming the children's algorithm. So they would be like Spider-Man and then like the character from that Frozen movie. You know what I mean? Just like a bunch of random kids things. And then they'd be singing like, I don't know, the world goes round or something like that. And uh, but like some of them were like pretty dark, though, too, where like people were making like disturbing videos that would still trigger all of the children's algorithm. You know what I mean? And, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, like I mean, we we I mean, I, I'm sure most people are familiar with those uh, videos already because they've already been talked about so much. They were even on Joe Rogan. He was even talking about it. But yeah, it's super crazy, disturbing, super weird, super everything. And I mean, I've actually seen them because I actually saw them on my niece's laptop the last time I went to visit Miami. And oh, uh, and that's why I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. That is rough. I saw them when the news broke. I was like, I have to figure out what these are. And they are disturbing. But I think that had a lot to do, though, with why they were getting, you know, that lawsuit brought up about them. You know what I mean? About the kids' content and, th and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to basically, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the, the you know, the, you know, the U.S. federal, you know, FCC actually did something positive, you know, for kids, for us to protect us. And, uh, and uh, be but because of that, though, you know, YouTube is uh, protecting their own ass and just saying, you know what, we're just not going to have any fucking kids content. Because if we can't, <laughs> if we can't get the data, you're useless to us. So, so fuck it. You know what I mean? We were not, we just don't, you know what I mean? And notice that, like, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm on YouTube all the time and the YouTube algorithm has gotten way better. YouTube has actually gotten a better experience. Uh, you know, YouTube seems to, you know, have gotten better maybe because they've already had to weed out all this stuff. Thank God, you know, in a sense, you know, for now. But to me, I think YouTube yeah. is, uh, you know, it's on his deathbed and it's to no fault of their own. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, not kind of, to my opinion, that's not run by them per se, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Actually. Uh, go ahead. I don't know. Just with like the algorithms and things like that. Um because like I've been doing those like war never changes videos and I actually had to change the title on YouTube because I think with war in the title, they didn't want to be pushing that. So I, I, I just changed it to the acronym. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like I think it's still the censorship algorithms are there, but. Oh yeah. But, but the censorship is coming in different forms. It's not what we think. So for example, um, you know, the censorship is basically uh, like, again, you know, they don't want you to be in the middle. If all of a sudden you're talking about oh, yeah. Trump, 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 whether it's, you know, pro-Trump or against Trump, they put you in a category and you're good. You know what I mean? They, they're, you know, you got your audience, you know, they put you out there, you know, they, but if you're all of a sudden like just, you know, in the middle and uh, you don't necessarily have an opinion, uh, but you're basically informing people. Yeah, you know, that's kind of like that's that that's the, what they don't they shadow ban, but they don't completely ban. What they ban is if you say trigger words, if all of a sudden like um I'm talking about uh, you know, men's rights instead of, you know what I mean, or if I'm talking uh, negatively about feminism or if I'm talking about, you know, the pedo stuff, you know what I mean? There's like a bunch of things that, you know, definitely just fucking, you know, they knock you out. And especially, again, like how you were saying, if you put war in the title, you can talk about war, but don't put war in the title. You know what I mean? It's just uh, Venezuela. You know what I mean? Whenever I put Venezuela, you know, when you say Iraq, Iran, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, I when we were talking the other day and you mentioned that, like, you, you have to kind of pick your side. You know what I mean? You have to be, like, full-on liberal or full-on conservative for them to push you. You can't kind of take that the middle route. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I started thinking about the channels that I watch that actively they're, they're definitely suppressing. And it's things like that. We are change. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with, like, Jason Burmis, but those guys, like, they they stay pretty in the middle. You know what I mean? Like, if Trump does something good, they're like, oh, this is great. But if he does something that they need to, you know, give him some shit for, they'll do that. And uh, they're the ones that we're dealing with all of the, the, the shadow banning and things like that. And I was like, wait, that's, I don't know, I was thinking about that. And uh, I noticed it in the channels that I watch that aren't, like, crazy hyper-partisan. The ones that kind of just stay, I don't know, just, it is what it is. You know what I mean? If something's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. But, uh, like, they don't play the team baseball. And uh, I don't know. I think you're right about that. 
Yeah, yeah. And to me, look, man, even like when it comes to like the ban of Alex Jones, I think it was more like a symbolic gesture type of thing because, you know, why did they pick him? I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, he was the only guy that already had like a, you know, a public access studio, you know, like an actual, you know, studio studio. Um, on top of the studio, he has his own servers, you know, so yeah. he doesn't have to rely on fucking Google or YouTube or anybody, you know what I mean? And a bunch of shit like that. So they picked him because... To me, it's like, you know, like they wanted to make sure that, you know, he stayed in the remain. He remained in the public eye as the guy that got banned off YouTube and as more, not just YouTube, but off every, you know, got banned off the Internet. And then everybody would, uh, you know, as people would keep getting banned, you know, they would just keep, you know, going back to him and he's still there. You know what I mean? Kind of like just keep it fresh in everyone's mind. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's all part of the PSYOP you know, type of yeah. shit, you know, like, you know, just letting you know we're censoring and, you know, and that's the thing, man. It's like, it's, it's it really is all psychological f- and it's really fucked up because, you know, that's basically what they're doing. They're basically, you know, slowly, you know, they're, they're going inch by inch and the, the people are allowing it and they just keep going and going and going. And that, and then eventually people are just not going to have any freedom, any, any voice, any opinion, any, anything. And we're, we're, you know, we're quickly, you know, getting to that point And, uh, you know, I don't know, man. It's it's it is a scary thought, you know, to to even you know to think those things, you know. And again, you know, that's another reason why you know I've moved out here to Mexico because you know to me it's like even if a worst case scenario thing were to happen, it's like you know what I don't want to be there. You know what I mean? I'd rather just be here. You know what I mean? At the worst case scenario here, you know what I mean? Worst, at, at the whole thing kind of just you know blows up. I could just you know go with my girl. You know what I mean? Have a little fucking farm, have a little sandwich stand, have a little whatever, and just live my life and just, hey, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But if, you know, the shit goes down in the U.S., it's like, man, you know, I'm, you know, I, I don't want to be a slave, you know, like a real slave. I, right now we're just debt slaves, but I don't want to be a real slave. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like in China, like in Russia, like in other parts of the world, you know, that have experienced communism. And, and I, I really do feel that, you know, we're... You know, inching closer to, to full blown communism, man. I mean, I don't know. You know what? It's a great segue. I mean, what do you think about that? Yo, you there? Oh. Did we lose you? Uh oh. <laughs> oh, we're having some technical difficulties here, I think. But anyways, well, I'm just going to continue on with uh, the conversation, you know, um, until he gets back. But, yeah, that threw me off for for a loop there. I don't know. I uh, forgot I lost my train of thought as to what I was talking about. But, yeah, I guess the, the loss of freedoms, you know, just the fact that, you know, um, as I said many, many times before, um, that, uh, you know, we're, we're going into communism. Um, let me see if we can get this going again. Yo, Hello. hey, you Yo. there? All right. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what happened. Maybe they heard us. I think <laughs> they so. like we got to shut them down. I think so, man. Hey, it's real, man. I really do think it's real. I mean, it's fucking crazy. Uh, I mean, you know, basically, there's this uh, show that I listen to, the Tinfoil Hat uh, podcast, and they have all kinds of people talking about all kinds of shit. And when the the, the guest is getting, you know juicy we, you know when the guest in the, the the information is getting juicy the same shit happens bro they the, something happens you know where the the thing just drops i mean anyways before i get too far into my my other tangent how far did i get before it dropped um yeah you're actually where were you at i don't know it was about a minute ago yeah i mean i was just basically saying as to you know we're inching closer into communism like each and every day and uh you know before you know it we're going to be full-blown communism you know like you're not debt slaves but literal real slaves and um you know i think that's kind of like where i left off and i was like trying to like pass the ball to you and then it was just crickets you know (laughs) yeah um i mean i don't know if i mean maybe it'll get there i really don't think the whole communist takeover is going to happen the way that a lot of the communists want it to happen. You know what I mean? Um, I really think like the debt situation is definitely a massive problem. And then like the whole, but wait, real quick, real real quick, man, you know, just the whole communism thing. I I think that with the country is already communist. Yeah, no, that that's actually socialist. Remember all the Bernie Sanders supporters. I'm like, guys, we really don't get much more socialist than we already are at this point right now. Like, 
we're really pretty much there. Right. And then, you know, and then uh, you said it. You literally, I mean, that's basically what I was trying to get at. Yeah. So, I mean, we're already there. The country is straight up 100% billion, 1 billion percent socialist. And now, you know, as you said, now these Bernie supporters are pushing for more socialism, meaning, hey, we got to build the gulags. You know, we got to start re educating <laughs> these guys. Uh, hey, those FEMA camps that we had built, uh, how come we don't, uh, I mean, bro. Bro. Yeah. That's, Actually, we yeah. were talking about how old we are the other day, but like you probably remember when they were building them and everybody who, who was like blowing the whistle on that and everybody who said that they were crazy. <laughs> Cause like this was maybe 2000, like six, seven, eight, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the coffins and, and the fucking mass graves. Yeah, dude. That stuff's real though. And they have them now at this point where they could <laughs> just. Like it's almost like Lego blocks, the way that they just assemble them. They hit up a new area. And, All right, we'll put it in this local field, your Pee Wee football field. They could just throw one in the matter of like hours. And I don't know, that, that stuff is horrifying and it's like real. It really exists. I knew these kids who used to do train hopping type of stuff. And uh, they, they saw that while they were out doing that. And uh, the, the, like they saw all of the pieces being sent into Chattanooga, and and yeah, it's it, that stuff. It always scared me, and I always imagined like they didn't stop them. You know what I mean? Like they're fully operational at this point. They're they're still empty and all of that. But like those things, they never like destroyed them. They just haven't used them just yet. And uh, I don't know that, that that's horrifying, dude. It, it, to me, it's just only gotten worse with time. You know, have you heard about the Walmart FEMA camps and and all that shit or no? Yeah, I mean, like they'll be the hubs. I mean, dude, yeah. I mean, it's already, you know, I think it's already gotten to that level, bro. And, and honestly, it, it, I was talking to somebody, I think it was my brother, not too long ago when the, the news was coming out on how, like, FEMA will, like, in, in the event of an emergency, they will use yep. um, the Walmarts as hubs for, like, distrib distribution and all of that. Uh -huh. And I was thinking about it, like, it makes sense because Walmarts, the, the way that they are located as is was they want it to be easily accessible from all highways. So that's why like Walmart put each store exactly where it is and like the distance away from the next store. Like the, they did their market research. They figured out that this was the best way to guide traffic and uh, for FEMA to just take that over now. I don't know, I thought that was, I don't know. It's definitely interesting. Well, I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, it's, it's all real, dude. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I have the video on my laptop of, uh, you know, the, the mass coffins, you know, of, of, of what you were speaking of from 20 years ago. And, uh, and, uh, but I can't show it because I, I did it on a video and it got blocked. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, a while ago. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people even forgot about the whole FEMA camp. Oh, thing. yeah. Yeah. Oh. Or wait, are you muted? Yeah. 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 I was blowing my oh. nose and shit. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought it might have dropped again. I was like, oh, no. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like th that's one of those conspiracy theories that like <coughs> it, it, they exist. They really exist. So even though you don't hear too much about them anymore, they're still out there. And then, you know, with all of these Bernie guys coming out from that, the Veritas leaks about the gulags, you're just like, no, this can't be what it's all about. And that's how, know. that's how it starts, bro. I mean, basically, you know, the whole project Veritas stuff, you know, I'm glad that they're out there, man. But, you know, basically those guys that were saying, uh, you know, those Bernie supporters, you know, that are the Bernie, you know, the main guys, right? I mean, doing their thing in their, what, what do you call those? Uh, the main... The campaign organizers. Right, 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 right. So these campaign organizers, you know, these are the ones that are talking about these things. And like the other day, there was a, 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 a Elizabeth Warren, um, you know, guy, you know, and he was just talking about... I don't know. The fact is like, yeah, you know, I, I support Elizabeth Warren, but, you know, it's kind of crazy how these people are getting a little crazy in here. And basically all that was just telling me is, again, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the the Gulag Archipelago. I don't know if you're familiar with like actually, you know, what what's in these things. And like and, you know, what you know, Jordan Peterson, as he talks about these things. But, you know, basically, you know, that's how it is, man. <clears throat> you know, there's only a few people, you know, they're all gung ho about the Gulags. Everybody else just complies then everybody else after that you know basically you know is just scared to say anything because they're scared of uh you know any kind of repercussion and then before you know it everybody's enslaved and it's like how the fuck did this happen and it just did you know what i mean yeah and uh and you know we're you know again you know look i mean i'll fuck it you know like i'll say it again right now <laughs> because i think i've said it in private i don't know if i said it on a on a stream before or not but I think that, you know, obviously, look, this is my, you know, my 
estimations of what's going to happen here. I could be wrong. Again, sue me, whatever. Read the disclaimer that I've had you know, at the bottom. I don't know what the fuck. Anyway, the point is, this is for entertainment purposes only, uh, if you're not aware. And anyway, the point is, is that this is what I think is going to happen. I think uh, Trump's going to get reelected. Duh. Anyways, after he gets reelected, um, and right at the end of his uh, uh, tenure, around 2023, you know, that's when we're going to have that massive uh, implosion of the dollar. Okay? And um, either A... He's going to, you know, somehow figure out a way to Putin it up and uh, remain president forever. Or he's going to do something completely different, you know, which is, you know, step down. I mean, not completely different. You know, he's going to do, uh, you know, basically, you know, what, you know, every other pawn like him does, which is, you know, just step down for the next guy. And the next guy, he's going to bring on the full on uh, socialism. Why? Because and full on communism. Why? Because at that point, you know, we're going to be, you know, worse than the great depression we're going to have a humongous swath of the population that are going to you know you know again you know as everybody was leaning right everyone is going to you know uh, rubber band all the way to the left and everyone's going to go straight to the left and the left is going to bring someone that's going to bring change you know and uh, what are they going to say what is the what is the left right now saying you know hey we're going to pay for school i'm going to give you a thousand dollars i'm going to pay for blah 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 we're going to do okay so, you know, the, the next, you know, guy that's going to come along, which I think is going to happen, I think that Trump will step down and they're going to bring somebody else along. And then this guy, um, you know, just like Hitler was put there, you know what I mean? Again, that's another touchy subject, doesn't that go there? But, you know, basically they're going to put another pawn and this pawn is going to, you know, be the representative of communism. And he's the one that's going to bring, you know, free everything. And, uh, you know, again, you know, communism, fascism, socialism, all that shit's under the same roof. You know, basically, it's like, oh, how are we going to give everything to everybody? Well, we're going to make everybody even, right? And we're already on our way there with feminism and blah, 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 blah. So that's, yeah. why, that's why I think Trump was kind of like a, a little bit of, a, you know, a, a monkey wrench into the plan because he's kind of bringing that whole PC stuff a little bit back. He's starting to bring things a little bit back. But I don't know if it's going to be enough, man. And, um, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? But I think that, you know, communism is really right around the corner. And um, it's up to us, you know, whether we fucking, you know, fall for this shit or we don't. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, man. I don't know, man. Go, go ahead. Yes. I, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, Ron Paul. And I watched that Liberty Report he does throughout the week. And, uh, I mean, he always is – he has been talking about forever, like, the fall of the dollar, like, the inevitable crash of the dollar – and uh, I mean, we are we have to be getting close at this point. And he, he was always saying, like, when that finally happens, whenever whenever it is, that will be when the socialists really are trying to push. But like we could be seeing that now, though, as well. Um, and, and you know what I mean? We might, we might be in the midst of something like that and not even really know it. But um, yeah. I don't know. I try to stay optimistic, though. I think the, the, the what is it like the spirit of liberty and all sorts of things like that, like just individuals taking responsibility once the government just kind of lets go of the dollar and starts letting people use like competing currencies and things like that i think people are gonna like really see the benefit of that as opposed to just you know the the central planners and the socialist yeah, you're, you're you're crazy optimistic bro i don't i mean there's no i mean look look everything is great up until that point where you said oh um you know that the the u.s government's gonna allow individuals to use competing currencies and, <laughs> well no. honestly i don't think they're gonna go down swinging but like it, it right. really it has to come to a point though where like they'll they're gonna have no other choice. Well, the dollar they can only inflate so much. You the know, dollar, what I mean? the dollar is gonna go into hyperinflation. You know, one thousand yeah. percent for sure. And then you know, after the dollar goes into hyperinflation, you know, just like Weimar Germany, just like you know, you've seen yeah. you know, many times before. Um, you know, once we go into that, you know, at that point, then you know, the dollar is gonna get destroyed, and then you know, there's gonna be two. You know, we're gonna move forward in one way. And and uh, sorry, let me. So after the dollar falls, how we're going to move forward is that the next, you know, currency, the next uh, world reserve currency would have to be backed by gold or silver or something. And so uh, the yuan supposedly is already backed by gold. You know, they would have to prove this or the U.S. can also just come out of left field and say, hey, we have the fucking gold. We just I'm not telling anybody about it. Here's the gold. Count it. Suck a dick. And uh, we're going to fucking remain, uh, you know, the you know, the the, the reserve yeah. currency. But they're going to they, they need to allow the currency to crash right now. The president, the United States president, 
Mr. Trump, can very easily fix <laughs> the economy like this. All he has to do is literally say, okay, this new dollar is, I mean, we're going to issue a brand new dollar backed by silver. Remember Kennedy tried to do that? Then, you know. Yeah. Okay. You know, they, uh, you know, uh, executed him. Uh, but anyway, so, yeah, Trump, all he would have to do is uh, just, um, you know, declare a brand new U.S. dollar backed by gold or silver and then say that the other dollar, the one that's in circulation right now, is utterly useless. That would rem that would all, all of a sudden render all debts null and void, not just debts like student debts and all this other shit, you know, but basically all debts around the world. So basically he's telling the, the world, the, you know, basically telling China, Russia, everyone, hey, I, we know that we owe you money, but – Suck a dick. You know what I mean? And what are you going to do about it? And and basically, we have the power to do that. It's called the debt jubilee. We should have done that a long time ago. We haven't done that. We're not going to do that. And so basically, you know, um, again, you, uh, you know, we're going to run this motherfucker into the ground. And then once we run this shit into the ground, uh, it's it's literally a free-for-all in the U.S., meaning uh, – they're not really going to give a fuck who takes who takes over. You know what I mean? So it, it's going to be either you know, and why I say it's going to be some communist leaning situation is because well, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. You know, when the whole fucking thing crumbles, and uh, and uh, and I hope not. You know, I hope America rises up. Uh, you know, and uh, we don't fucking you know fall for this bullshit. But uh, you know, we, we did sympathize with uh, Germany before World War Two, and. Uh, be, you know, before we got bombed at Pearl Harbor, in case, you know, people forgot. So, uh, you know, it's not like we're not immune to being socialist. Uh, you know, when FDR said, hey, uh, we're going to instill all these social programs, you know, people were all about it, you know, and so yeah. on and so forth. I mean, right? Yeah. I Honestly, I, I think the reset, I think they they would do it before the actual crash. You know what I mean? Like before it was just completely you know, out of their hands, I think they would use that last, like the final hour to usher in whatever the new one was going to be. And as far as debts, I think it would just get denominated. You know what I mean? There would be some sort of conversion ratio and it would all just be switched over to the new currency, but it would still be stable though. You know what I mean? So, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think so, man, because you know, the, I mean, that's, that's one thing I talk about a lot on my channel and um, I, I dive deep into, and you know, we talk about the SDR, and I don't know if you're familiar with that. No. Nah. So the SDR is this, uh, this is, well, so before Bitcoin, you know, before, you know, a lot of the things that are happening now, you know, with. Uh, with Wait, uh, was it like Trump. a gold certificate? No, 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 no. An SDR, what an SDR was supposed to be is that, you know, this is, you know, just go back 10 years, you know. Um, basically, this was a solution for the death of the dollar because everybody was already fully aware the dollar was going to fall. You know, this shit that, you know, they would talk about on Bloomberg, you know, here, I'll pull up a, a little graphic for you and everything. But, you know, basically, you know, what the SDR was, um, you know, and, and, you know, it's not anymore, even though some people think that it could be a still thing, but basically it, it's a basket of currencies. So the dollar is king currency, you know, that's what everything is settled in. But since, you know, they already knew that there was going to be a future very, Early, you know, very, you know, in the next decade or so in which uh, there would not, um, you know, be a dollar anymore um, and probably not uh, not just a dollar, but not a, there wouldn't be a euro. There wouldn't be other currencies like that around anymore. They said, hey, what we could do is uh, create a brand new currency called the SDR and it'll just be a mix of all, all the currencies that are already king, like the dollar, the euro, the yuan, the yen, the British pound, and all, and then, and again, you know, that's why when the Facebook uh, Libra coin came out, everybody was like, hey, 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 what are you doing, what are you doing? Because it was basically this, only it wasn't issued by a government entity, it was being issued by Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so, you know, this is, you know, so that's why when Bitcoin came in all of a sudden, you know, and now, you know, countries that are being hit hard by uh, by sanctions like Iran or being hit hard by their devaluing of their currency like Argentina, you know, they're straight up using Bitcoin to fucking transact and, uh, you know, they're getting around not just the dollar, but, you know, pretty much everything. And, uh, you, you know, so all of a sudden, like everything is now turned to two. Everything has been now put into a tailspin, you know, not just in uh 
you know, then the world economy and the, you know, all these things. So like, so for example, like this is the last thing I'm going to say, because you know, I've been talking about this for a minute, but you know, basically today, you know, um, you know, uh, the, the, the Chinese markets came back online and they pumped 1.42 trillion. So 1.4 trillion yuan into their economy. They just printed out of thin air 1.4 trillion. And they pumped into the economy, which is the equivalent. I think it was like, I think they said 1.8 billion U.S. I mean, no, what was it? Or 180 billion U.S. And, uh, you know, the 180 billion U.S., yeah, that's a lot. But, you know, we've been pumping 140 billion every day for weeks now to pump up our economy. So, you know, the whole thing of like, you know, getting into hyperinflation, you know, by the time 2023 comes along, I'm like, bro, bro, I mean, we're, we're, we're there. We're literally printing, you know, 140, 100, 100 billion. Let's just round it off. Fuck it, because it's different every day. So let's just say 100 billion. We're printing 100, 100 billion, all right, out of thin air every single day um, and throwing it into the stock market, throwing it into the, the, you know, whatever, in order to, you know, keep everything afloat. And now China is doing the same thing. So the whole SARS you know, I mean, SARS, whatever. Yeah, because it's like, you know, whatever, the fucking coronavirus, whatever the fuck they're calling it, you know, whatever the fuck this is, it's all the, you know, hey, you know, don't look here, look over here. Why? Because what did they do? First of all, the markets were closed because of Chinese New Year, number one. Number two, they remained closed because of the fucking virus, all right? And then as soon as they open, oh, hey, we're going to pump all this money into it. And oh, oh, and by the way, the reason that the markets are falling it has nothing to do with all these economic the things that are here in your face. No, 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 no. It's it's because of the virus. The virus. <laughs> the virus got into the stock market. <laughs> okay. And so it's like it's the same shit. You know what I mean? The same thing when you're seeing the impeachment or the this or the that or whatever the fuck in the U.S. You know, all your it's just look over here, but don't look at what's happening with the economy. You for for, for God's sake, don't look over here. <laughs> Please don't look. <laughs> yeah. Actually, a lot of people that I watch, like, I don't know, um, what's it? The, I know, actually, we, in the first video we did together, we talked about X-22. And mm -hmm. I don't like a lot of what he does, but I think he has good guests on a lot of the time. And some of them I hear mentioned, and I've actually, like, I've heard Ron Paul mention this, but, like, the way Trump tries to champion the economy right now and act like, you know, this is the greatest thing for America and it's all because of me and the stock market at all time highs every other day. It's because of me. These are all good indicators like that's going to be his folly, because when the whole thing does crash and the whole time he's been saying that he's behind all of these things, it's just it, he's setting himself up for failure. And uh, I don't know. I, I thought that was pretty interesting because a lot of those people tend to be really pro Trump on there. But the way that I don't know, just the way he talks about the economy and he likes to take credit for it. I, I mean, Trump, it, it, Trump is a look, man. Again, you know, I vote. Uh, Trump is a puppet, bro. You know what I mean? I yeah. voted for Trump because back when he was running uh, during 2016, he was saying everything that, you know, we're, we're talking about now. So I'm like, bro, this guy, Trump, we know Trump. Everybody loves Trump. I mean, love or hate him. You know, hey, we can respect him. You know, he's a badass. And now he's talking all this conspiracy shit, theory shit. He's on Alex Jones every other week. Oh, dude, forget about it. You know what I mean? This is who we need to drain the swamp. And as soon as he got in there, Hey, he just, he's, he's just like everybody else. So right now, you know, I, I, I feel like I got duped just like when I voted for Obama. Remember Obama was going to bring all this change and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was, uh, that was one of the worst ever. Right, and actually so I knew that was going to happen. Like the, just the people that he was surrounding himself with. And actually we were talking about Alex Jones and all that. He did that uh, movie, the Obama descent. I remember at the time. And if anybody ever doubted Alex Jones and you're familiar, though, with all of the terrible things that happened under the Obama administration, I highly recommend you go watch the Obama deception. It's horrifying how accurate he was in predicting all of the things that would happen during the Obama administration. Um, I don't know. That's some old school sort of Alex Jones. That was like the tail end of him doing any sort of good work <coughs> before he went off into like complete insanity land. No, I mean, but, no, uh, he just picked a team. He just went to the right. That's it. Yeah.
I think honestly, I think somebody made him. Like I don't, I don't know. I don't want to listen, be like man. One just of those like, guys. like somebody talked to him. Listen, of but. course, of co- I, yes, somebody did talk to him. Just like somebody talked to Joe Rogan. Somebody talked to X twenty two report. Somebody, listen, man. Everybody's almost compromised right now. Just about anyone that's uh, an X twenty two report. I mean, maybe nobody got to him per se, but you know, he's sticking to his guns and he's, uh, you know, he's there out there like believing that uh, <laughs> Trump is, you know, going to lead us to fucking, you know, he's going to be the, he's, uh, the next god or whatever. But you mm-hmm. know. It's no, man. Phenomenon. Yeah, but you know the reality is that Trump, you know, just like Obama, he fucking fooled us, you know, and um, and and, and what we, you know, either we learn from it or we we just remain fools. And uh, and basically, you know, what's what's happening with Trump is that he's just another puppet. It doesn't really fucking matter who's in there. You know what I mean? He's just another fucking puppet. And uh, and that's the thing. It doesn't. He, at this point, uh, he's just touting, you know, the best economy, the best economy, whatever. But you know, basically, how it's going to pan out is that yeah, it's going to crash whether under him or not. Um, but basically it's going to crash and it's going to be, maybe it's not going to crash until the next president. You feel me? Um, but I think it's going to crash before him because that's how they're going to get that, you know, fucking super, uh, socialist guy in there, you know, because I mean, again, you know, uh, it, it might be Yang, it might be the rock, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Or hey. Kanye West or something. No, no, no. I mean, you know, as much as, <laughs> no, but I really do think it could be the rock, man. I know it sounds insane, but we got fucking Trump. And if, yeah. try, if all of a sudden The Rock starts talking about everything that Bernie and uh, and Yang and all these motherfuckers are talking about, you see uh, uh, The Rock talking about Bitcoin, talking about giving you a thousand dollars, talking about free healthcare, free school, free, bro. Who, I'll, I'll vote for the fucking Rock. I mean, give me my thousand dollars, bro. Fuck it, I'll take it while the fucking empire is going down. I'll buy that Bitcoin you're touting, but you know what I mean? Or, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think actually the smart money would be doing that. Anybody who's getting that check, yeah, if no they're shit. smart, they would be buying something like like Bitcoin or. Yeah. Or gold or something but that's coming bro i mean you don't think so i mean i don't know i mean i think it's easy to see it online you know what i mean like because every website is all liberal and and everywhere you look on social media um i i don't know i feel like they there's more support for or it seems like there's more support for it than there actually is like i feel like if you go to like outside of major cities um, I, I don't like where the vast majority of people are. I don't think that they would be in favor of it, even at, actually in Philly, like Philly's a crazy liberal town. And uh, there's, you know, crazy amounts of Trump supporters here. They're just like real low key. So, like, I don't know the universal basic income. I think like you were saying, we would have to be in some like really dire straits with the economy. Like we would have to be in a bad situation. Right. And that's why, that's why, yeah, I agree with you. And that's why I think that, you know, that this whole thing is going to come down and it might not fully all the way come down. Um, you know what I mean? Like, um, by the time he ends it, you know, but it will come down hard and uh, who, I mean, who knows? I mean, honestly, who the fuck knows? You know what I mean? But something, you know, that I I think that that could be a, a scenario because that's the scenario that's played out, you know, in other, you know, like in the past, you know, just, uh, look, man, the reason I bring up, uh, Germany so much and, uh, you know, uh, and what happened with Weimar Germany and how Hitler got into power and how it closely relates to us is because, listen, man, let me ask you a question. Are you familiar with Operation Paperclip? Um, was that the, the Nazi one? Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. Where they brought them over after World War II, all the scientists? Yes, sir. So, I mean. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, there's like some music playing in the background. <laughs> Oh, it might be my cat doing something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought it was like a violin or something. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, that, ben, that pussy's always getting us in trouble, man. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to mine. I love her. Anyway, so <laughs> um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, but uh, what was I saying? I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Fuck. Oh, with Paperclip? Oh, yeah. So Operation Paperclip. So basically, yeah. So go ahead. What do you know about Operation? I'll let you, I'll let you talk. What do you know about it? And, uh, and if there's anything you know wrong, I'll, I'll jump in. But go ahead. Um, Just that like, yeah, at the end of World War II or whatever, we hired all we like we took the best and brightest of the Nazi scientists and just anybody that was really educated. And we just brought them into America. Right. And then they we sent them on. Like yeah. NASA and, and yeah, correct. You know, not just the, the the scientists, but you know the people behind the the camps. You know, the for the Jews. You know, the uh, ones that yeah, were, like a lot of like psychology. The the the, like, the German. Uh, you know, like the guys in uh, in military. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, everybody, okay. everybody, and it wasn't just us. You know, basically, I've learned more about this, and it was uh, all the winners of the world. You know, World War Two. 
Um, Germany, uh, Russia was the other, you know, they were also part of the, you know, they were on our side. So they, all, they so basically it was us, Russia, um, um, I think China, right? You know, they were all fighting for the best, but we got the best, you know what I mean? We, you know, because we had the most resources and all this other shit, but we ended up getting the best of the best from, from uh, but they, you know, they went around, uh, I think England, you know, there's a bunch of people that got, you know, these guys from Germany. But yeah, so these guys then came back to the U.S. and they were the ones that were behind MK Ultra, NASA, um, you know, so many, so many things. And, uh, you know, basically as, as you know, if you're going down, you know, if you're, you're looking at history, you know, what happened with Germany and then you're looking at our history from after World War II going forward, you know, they've. You know, everything from building, you know, from Eisenhower building the fucking, uh, uh, the highways, you know, to, you know, I'm um, again, things like MK Ultra, things to the wars, you know, like every, everything what's happening right now, you know, with the, with the money, with the, uh, with the, with the currency and the money and, you know, so on and so forth. And it's like, man, you know, um, it's very kind of crazy, you know, what's going on right now. So, uh, you know, to me, it's like, you know, so many correlations, it's, it's too similar, and so that's why I, I, I just say, it's like, yeah, man, I mean, this is only, you know, just, we're just going to repeat the same thing. That's what they want us to do. They want this. They, remember the, you know about the Rothschilds. They don't care, you know, who's in power. As long as they're the ones that are printing the money, right? Yeah. Okay. And the Rothschilds are already in the China. The rule. That's right. The, the Rothschilds are already in China. They're already, so they're already staked. In other parts of the world that are the ones that are going to be, you know, replacing this one once it's done, once this empire falls. And again, it's not, it doesn't mean that the U.S. is going to fall. I mean, I mean, hold on. It doesn't mean that the U.S. is going to disappear. It's not going to be apocalypse now. It's not, hopefully not. But it's definitely, I mean, again, you know, England's still around. Spain is still around. You know, all these, you know, all these former empires, China, all these, they're still around. And we could be, you know, we could retake the throne in the future. But yeah. I, I, I <coughs> talked a lot about that with a couple of my friends, like a, a depression or anything like that. I don't think it's going to be as severe as it might have been in the past. It's going to be more. You, you think it'll be worse? Yeah. See, I feel like we have the technology. No, 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 no. It's because that, we print it into oblivion. Nah, fuck the technology, bro. All that shit goes out the window, bro. You know what I mean? You know? Like uh, right now we have the, with the technology and computers, we've been able to print more than you can actually print on paper. Because all we got to do is on a computer go clunk, 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 and a billion zeros, you know, a one and a billion zeros, you know. So it's actually way worse now because of derivatives. There's so many, so many things. It's it's way worse. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to. Uh, I don't know. I just think that like the where technology is, a depression, I feel like it, it could be bad in all sorts of things like that. But I don't think it would be as dire as like the Great Depression was. But I don't know. I could be wrong, though. Maybe it would be. Yeah, I think it would be. I'm going to tell you straight up. Listen, bro. There's parts of the world right now that are going through fucking hell. Through, right? Through, you know, uh, you could say the end of times, right? You could go to Somalia, right? Or fucking yeah, Yemen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. There's a plenty of places around the world that are hell on earth. Um, I'm not saying that that could happen to the U.S. I mean, well, I'm kind of saying it a little bit. I hope not. I really hope not. Knock on wood. I really hope that we come out of it. We fucking, you know, wake the fuck up and we strong Americans, you know, push back because if any country can do it, we can do it. But unfortunately, what's happening right now is that, you know, we are, you know, it's the fall of empire and fall of empire could come soft or hard. And yeah. this one looks like it's coming hard. Look at Russia. Look at China just a little bit over 100 years ago. You know, these are countries, China alone, you know, way bigger than us. And they, they they were all enslaved and they all went, I mean, look at them still now. So what makes you think that we're beyond that? And what you're going to, and honestly, technology is only going to make that easier. Now, that's why I talk about so much about Bitcoin and uh, the blockchain and all those other shit, because that's what will get us out of this, you know, from being totally enslaved with technology. But, you know, it's, you know, the U.S. is not embracing this stuff. You know? Yeah. Actually, and that's something that like that Andres Andonopoulos always talks about. Like you can't regulate Bitcoin out of your country. You just regulate your country out of Bitcoin. Correct. And I, I don't know. And I, I, I honestly, I'm not too familiar with this, but I hear a lot of crypto people talk about Trump is about to crack down on crypto. He's been cracking coming. down. Like I, I, I really don't know any like details of it, but I just thought that was weird because I know a lot of crypto people, at least you know, in the build up to the to his presidency and his election and stuff, they were all for 
um, him be, and, and, and things like that because they thought he would be good with Bitcoin. But I guess it isn't that isn't really the case. No, no, no. In fact, uh, what was happening with the, you know, the run up to 20K, um, you know, and again, it's funny how the, a lot of the crypto people don't talk about it. They, they should keep talking about this on a regular basis. But, you know, all the way up on the run up to 20K, basically what happened was that, you know, we, it was already found out. It was leaked. You know, and uh, we already know it's it's all you get. Maybe you can do the research on this and you're a good research guy and I suck at this. But, you know, basically what happened was that, you know, the, you know, Trump, you know, saw that Bitcoin was getting out of hand. And obviously that was going to put a dent into his amazing economy. So he couldn't have that. So he said, OK, so how are we going to how are we going to push this down? Well, with the same way that we did with gold and silver, we're going to make derivatives of Bitcoin, which is what they did that's why that's when they put you know the trading of bitcoin futures and trading bitcoin you know all this uh you know bitcoin that they're trading is that they're all they're doing is they're creating with tether and all these other entities are creating all these bitcoin out of thin air just like they create uh gold and silver out of thin air right um with yeah. the derivatives and so by doing that it devalues and not only does it devalue it but it, it uh, also um allows them to control the price and a lot of people still don't want to believe this. They still don't want to, you know, whatever, even though all this has come out. And, um, and uh, you know, basically what happened was that like in the run up to 20, you know, 2017, when uh, he, he allowed the SEC and he allowed these, you know, he actually pushed that shit through, you know, Trump, you know, again, all this is out there. Um, and then the, the, the guy that was in charge of the federal trade, no, not the FTC, uh, the um, Fuck. Um, the guy that, you know, the, the people in charge of the, the economy or, or the whatever. The Treasury? Yeah, I think the Treasury. Uh, the Giancarlo guy. Giancarlo, whatever his name is. That guy, we thought that he was on Bitcoin's side, but it turned out that he was the guy that was behind uh, and, you know, uh, pushing through and uh, making sure that all this was going to run smooth. And so, you know, where we are today. Um, but basically, you know, they ran it up. I mean, I mean, and then that ran it up, but um, it was already running up on its own. But then they really ran it up really quickly to 20K and then they crashed it down. And then, you know, yeah, they're still. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, that's what's going on. Maybe if you want to do a little research on that for maybe one of our next podcasts or what have you. But, you know, uh, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, this guy Chico Crypto, there's a guy named Chico Crypto. He did a really good uh, video on it. I'm going to see if I can find it. I got to do some digging, but he did a he did some a really good report on that when it came out a few months ago. I want to say I want to I want to say it was like three four months ago or something, maybe more, maybe I don't know around there. I have no idea. But basically, it was a little while ago, and uh, you know, as soon as that happened, I was like, man, fuck, I knew it. And um, and you know, again, you know, nobody wants to talk about these things because you know, people just are fucking ostriches. They just want to put their heads <laughs> in the in the fucking sand and they don't want to you know talk about these things because they don't want to get in trouble with YouTube or fucking you know the censorship gods or whatever the fuck you know. But uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, basically, no, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I feel like if Trump, I don't know, I, I feel like he he should embrace Bitcoin. Like if, if he made that a thing for America and he got all of his people on board for it, you know what I mean? Like that would be something like a, mo a move to begin to position everybody for, for like, you know, a dollar collapse. I don't know. I don't know. Man, I just feel like there's, he's a, puppet. there's a way he could spin it. He's a puppet. He's a puppet. Yeah. He has, he has no control over anything, bro. He's just told what to do. And so, you know, when he told... See, I think, though, he... I, I really don't think he's part of the establishment. I do think, like, he's, he's not, working he's not, for... He's not. There's two... But the thing is that we got to remember that it, it, we think that there's just, like, one tiny group of uh, people ruling the world. No, it's a bunch of tiny groups of people, you know? It's yeah. a bunch of rich families, all right? They're all over the world, you know? And um, a lot of them have a lot of influence, and they've been, been have influence for a very long time. And, uh, you know, right now, we can just pretty much say that, you know... I don't know, man. It could be the Zionists versus the fucking Catholics, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you remember like back when the you know, oh, you don't watch for sports, right? No, no, uh, not damn, too damn it. Now I was gonna make sports. a reference. I was gonna make a sports reference, you know. <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, man. You know, just like um, you know, okay, yeah, just like the Catholics versus the, versus the convicts, because back uh, back in the day, the University of Miami, you know, uh, back in the '80s, you know, we were kicking everybody's ass, and it was just a bunch of guys from the hood. And, uh, you know, the team back then was Notre Dame, you know what I mean? So, you know, I would, when, we, when we would play those games, the media would call those games the Catholics versus the convicts. So you could say that something like that's <laughs> happening now. And, you know, definitely uh, you already know what Trump is on. You know, he's definitely not a Catholic. So. Yeah. That, yeah, that is a good way, I guess, to explain it. 
So yeah, I, I mean, know. basically, basically that's why he's shaking shit up in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, they don't want him in there. But it's like because it's like the other team is in there, you know, doing their thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the ruling, the team that rules, is ruling this country right now, is not in power. You know what I mean? But basically, uh, yeah, that could happen. You know what I mean? So we don't know. I mean, uh, what do know. you think about Bernie Sanders? Like, just yeah. like as far as you know, like, do you think he's establishment or do you think? You know, like, is he just another Trump on a Democrat side, like somebody that they don't want in there pretty much at all costs? Or Yeah, yeah, like, what yeah, you... the, yeah, both of those things, basically. Uh, so ba- he was a Trump, you know, he was a, a Trump, but for the left. And uh, he was a guy that's going to shake shit up in there. And the original Bernie, the original Bernie. But then yeah. after after what they did to him at the DNC, you know, with Hillary and De- Debbie Washerman Schultz and uh, that whole fucking deal... After that, and then he started endorsing Hillary, and ever since then, he just started selling out, basically, yeah. and going, you know, and then, you know, uh, just saying, you know, out of the... Because he was another Russia collusion guy as well, which always kind of let me down about right. him. Right, and so basically, you know, to me, he became establishment after that, and um, and then, you know, that, that's why I don't, you know, right now, I don't, you know, I don't think that he's seriously, you know, in consideration to be in... A Democratic nominee because if he were to run, he could definitely give Trump, you know, um, a run for his money. But even though Trump is not the guy that they want in power, you know, I mean, he he actually fits better, you know, than someone like Bernie Sanders would because Bernie Sanders would start, you know, doing a bunch of, uh, <clears throat> you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, hippie hippie dippy shit, and uh, Trump at the very least. You know, he's being like a fucking big brute Godzilla and fucking, uh, you know, hey, fuck Iran. I'm going to go and fucking stick my dick in there. All right. (laughs) So, you know, yeah, you know, so, yeah, Yeah. at the very least, they would rather have that guy, you know, until they get their guy in power, you know, which will come, you know, because, again, the longer that Trump is in power, the more, you know, we're going to lean left come election time of 2024. Because in this one, it's going to be a wash, you know what I mean? Whoever the fuck, I mean, you already see that the DN, uh, whatever the fuck I was happening during Iowa or whatever the fuck that is, I don't know. Yeah, the, but I mean, yeah. the whole thing is a shit show. I mean, I'm telling you, man, I was listening to the Tinfoil Pod, Tinfoil Hat Podcast. I, I want to give him a shout out because they're so great. And he had some guy on that, you know, again, talking conspiracy, but also talking uh, about uh, the 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 WWE the, the the world wrestling you know whatever and yeah. uh, and you know kind of like to just bring it up the fact uh you know how all this stuff is very closely correlated but you know anyways he just he just made me think about the fact that yeah dude any minute now I wouldn't be surprised if Hillary just comes out of left field again if you watch wrestling you know it's just uh you know <coughs> two guys fighting in the ring and then somebody just comes out of the uh, uh, you know out of the fucking uh you know, out of the fucking uh, locker room with a fucking steel chair. Ah! Yeah. You know, to the do their thing. The camera goes. <laughs> and so I think I think Hillary's going to try and do one of those. And, you know, Trump's still going to win out. I mean, I don't fucking know. But I wouldn't be surprised anymore. And that's why when I said the Trump, I mean, when I said the Rock, you know, could be the next president coming up. You know, uh, hey, man. You know what I mean? Like, why not? <laughs> He's, like, giving people the rock bottom. Hey, bro. I hey, did, I, Camacho, I bro. Something. President Camacho, bro. You remember Idiocracy, right? <laughs> yeah. That would be full circle, bro. I mean. I saw something that Hillary Clinton would have had to apply or whatever to get California in, like, November. And she never did. But then I read up on it again. And I think fused by what whoever I was listening to was saying or if they changed something. But she has until like to to qualify, like to register for California. Oh, say it again. You, which you, you, would... you broke up. Say it again. He, she has until when? I think it's like no, or I think it's April. Um, I saw something. It was like no. They were saying November, but I I, I don't know. I looked it up because I, I might have just misheard them. I, I think she, she definitely missed some though already. Like she missed Iowa. You know what I mean? But for <laughs> her to win, she would like need California. And I believe the deadline would be April. So yeah, we'll okay. know. April you know Fools. what I mean? We're going to get an April in the next Fools. couple of months. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, she's not – like, if she would have won, she would have already won. You know what I mean? No, I know. I, I know. I know. But I'm just I saying. think the, the real conspiracy one is the – the um, what's Michelle Obama? She's There's a, a lot of, like 
Well, well <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen stuff like that. That's that's rude. She's probably like, "What are these people doing?" I don't know. Michael, about like that. A Michael Obama, right? Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah. Michael, right? <laughs> Imagine saying that to her. She'd be like, what are these fucking people? No, she'll fucking about? turn Debo on you. Say, what'd you say? They got shit. But th that's the one, though, that I think there is something to it because they, like the mainstream media, I know like CNN and MSNBC, they'll what, run that she's polls. A man? No, no, that, that <laughs> she'll, she's going to end up running for president. Damn it. Because they keep running polls for oh, like Michelle? who would be the best. And they put her in, and she's winning, dude. Right now, dude, they don't want to. Man, they want, listen, man. But you said it already, bro. They want Trump in there. They want them. They already know who they want. Look, man. Right now, like Tulsi Gabbard. You know, they really wanted a fucking woman in there. Wouldn't they be fucking putting Tulsi right in front? She's a veteran. But she talks about the war, though. She wants to audit the Fed and stuff like that. Yeah, so did Trump. I think. I think that's why they're so mad about her. Is because they're like, yo, you you are so perfect. You would have been president if you just never mentioned these wars or the Federal right. Reserve. I, no, I, I know, think I that's know, why. I know. But but Trump did did all that, and he became president. Yeah, I well, he never talked about the Fed though. Oh yeah, he did. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, he's a business guy. He knows all about the system, bro. He knows. He you said know, he was going to like audit them or. Like, he talked about it. He talked about it. He was very, you know, I don't know if he specifically said audit. You know, I don't want to, you know, say something that, you know, I don't remember hearing per yeah. se. But I do remember him talking about a lot about the economy, a lot about, you know, Ron Paul, a lot of Ron Paul's, uh, you know, fucking, uh, you know, talking points. So I'm pretty fucking sure that he's uh, he did say it because, you know, he that's why, you know, a lot of people voted for him because he was, you know, he knew what was going on. And again, the, from the business side of things, you know, basically, you know, the whole income tax thing, you know, uh, you know, the reason that, you know, look, on paper, he's a gazillionaire, you know, but the reality is, is that how did he become a gazillionaire is because he went bankrupt like a million times and he knows how to use the system. He knows how to get money from the system, you know, and all this other shit. And, uh, you know, if people saw that, they would be aghast because, you know, basically they would be like wait a minute you could do that yeah. so yeah you know so that's why oh you can't look at his taxes that's that's basically it i mean i, Actually, mean, but I always thought that was one of, like the, his taxes i thought that was one of his maneuvers where he's like i'm gonna try to hold on to this for so long so they build it up and when i show it to him i think all of his paperwork's probably straight it is. Honestly. It is. It is. It is. You it know is. What I mean, it is. Then, it's a hundred percent straight. It's a, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like and so when you Democrats know, Democrats build it up and then just releases it, and there's nothing there. You know what I mean? Listen, man. How do you think like companies, like major companies, like uh, Amazon, pay no taxes or very little taxes? It's because they say or declare losses at the end of the year. And how do they declare losses? They're like, whoa, we put a lot of money into um. R&D, you know, research and development. And yeah. we put a lot of money into this and we put a lot of money into that. And, and at the end of the day, even though we made seven zillion dollars, <laughs> you know, we put eight zillion dollars into the space program. Oh, yeah. I remember Bezos wants to go to space and shit. So it's like, oh, you know, when you do your taxes, like, well, you're at a loss. So, you know, yeah. We, yeah. So you basically the government's like, well, since you're at a loss, we want you to remain in business. So, you know, we're actually going to give you money. Well, it's not, you know, not that you don't have to pay anything. We're going to give you money. And so, you know, there's things like that. There's a lot of loopholes, a lot of fucking crazy shit. So, eh, you know, I can go on and on about that. You know what I mean? But, you know, I think we're starting to run, you know, kind of kind of long on the on the podcast here. It says 100. Uh, I mean, it says one hour and 12 minutes almost. Oh, whoa. All right. Yeah. yeah um, I left you speechless there. I left you speechless. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> It didn't seem that long at all. I know, right? It doesn't it's uh it's uh when you're having fun. It's like, uh, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. For sure, bro. So uh so yeah, so like uh, I guess let's start wrapping this up, man. You know, so this, this is enough for a pre-trial and uh you know, um we're going to see what people think about this and uh regardless of what people think, we're going to keep doing this. All right. So <laughs> But it would be nice to get some feedback, you know. So uh, for anyone that sat through this whole thing and listened to this whole thing and enjoyed this whole thing or didn't enjoy this whole thing, please let us know what you think. Uh, it would be awesome. And I'm sure, you know, some people are already letting us know what they think. <laughs> we fucking hate you. Oh, fuck. How dare you say this or that? <laughs> so uh, I don't know why I'm speaking like a woman, you know, that, that could that could probably be a soy boy. You know, who knows? But anyways, all right, enough. I'm digging myself in a hole into of, uh, the, the abysses of uh, YouTube shadow ban hell. So... <laughs> Like we've already said enough uh, trigger words, right? 
But uh, but anyways, brother. Um, yeah, where so let us know where uh, where we can find you, man. Um, yeah, I'm on BitChute. If you just type in Toya Harada, I should pop up. And then I'm also on uh, YouTube as well. Same thing, Toya Harada. Um, and then actually, I upload my podcast like uh, or my videos in in MP3 format to Anchor. So if you type in Toya Harada on your favorite podcasting platform, um, I should pop up on there as well. And then I'm also on Twitter, which I believe it's at um toya underscore harada but let me make sure about that because it might be something else oh yeah i'm, I'm <laughs> well your bit shoot or what which one was it sorry i was looking at something or else. my twitter oh yeah twitter, twitter is uh, oh, harada it. underscore toyo so uh yeah it's just the opposite there we go i got you all right so we got your twitter we got your bit shoot we got you all wrapped up there so, um, all right, all right, guys. Well, you already know the deal, man. You know, they, if you, you know, thank you so much to Toya. You know, we're definitely going to be doing a lot of work together. You know, uh, we definitely had a lot of fun, a lot of chemistry, the whole thing, you know, uh, and that's it guys. So guys, you already know the deal. If you like this content, you please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon so you can get, uh, more notifications. I'm going to be doing a lot of these podcasts with other individuals, not just Toya. And we're going to be doing this on a weekly basis. And I'm most likely going to have a brand new channel alongside the brand new travel channel that I already have and all the other stuff that's going on. You know, again, check out the website, you know, my website, check out, uh, you know, on me on Twitter, check me out everywhere on the internet. You already know what's up and, uh, that's it guys. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, and, uh, we'll see you guys when we see you guys. Peace later. You want to say bye? Uh, yeah. Hey, take care. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.